Greetings, everyone, and welcome. Uh, thanks for joining DevOps for Java Shops today. My name is Brian Benz. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I'll be your guide through this session. We're going to start with four basic things. Uh, there's going to be a really quick intro, and then I'm going to get straight into a demo. So we're going to talk about what is DevOps, so everyone's on the same page. We're going to talk about people, process, and products, which is the key to a successful DevOps project. Uh, then comes the demo, and then we're going to wrap up talking about how you can actually keep investments if you've already made some investments in a DevOps infrastructure. Um, let's get started with that. Okay, so what is DevOps? Uh, this is a great quote from a colleague of mine, Donovan Brown. DevOps is a union of people, process, and products to enable continuous delivery of value. Um, people, process, and products are key, and if you're not delivering value, you're kind of wasting your time and your investment in a DevOps infrastructure. So, people, this is the kind of question you have in any typical software development project. It works on my machine, you'll have uh, people saying that, and uh, if an issue comes up that you're having problems with in production, for example, uh, who's supporting what? Who's actually delivering which parts of the project? Who's managing the project? Who's delivering the code? Uh, where is the code? Where's the actual code located? Uh, where's their backups? Uh, can I get an update? into the project, into an update on a specific issue we're having, uh, and how's the timeline going? Uh, these are the common questions that you're going to have all the time. And the best way to deal with all these questions and all these issues is to have a really good process. Uh, here's your typical software development lifecycle, plan, develop, release, and monitor and learn. You'll find in typical software development life cycles, monitoring is the actual part of the application process, which is not um, followed as much as the others. Uh, it tends to be overlooked towards the end. So it's something to really focus on as well, because planning, you've got folks to do the planning for any good project. You've got developers to do the development, and hopefully they're doing some testing, and you have some professional testers who might be part of that as well. And then you've got the release people who are managing releases, making sure the software is there, it's compliant with whatever uh, regulations you might have, and then also that it actually meets the needs of the customers. And that's the key to monitoring and learning. So monitoring and learning is where you actually figure out if step one and step two and step three were successful and you actually delivered something that was requested by the end user or whoever asked for the change or the update or the new feature to be implemented. Did that new feature actually deliver the results you expected, or do you have to start the process over again, or can you move on to other uh, issues, other features uh, in your project as well? So the way you manage a good process for the people is products. Uh, and in the case of Microsoft, we've got several products that you can use. Uh, we've got GitHub, of course, uh, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Uh, for delivery, we've got Azure Pipelines, GitHub Extensions, and GitHub Actions. I'm gonna be showing you um, Azure Pipelines today specifically, but the similar uh, similar sorts of workflow can be done with GitHub Actions as well. And then for monitoring and learning, uh, managing and securing as well, we've got Azure Monitor, Azure Policy, Azure Automation, and Azure Security Center. Uh, Microsoft literally spends billions of dollars a year on uh, making sure that their software is not only compliant with any local regulations that might be in place for different locations around the world, but also that it's secure and that it's ahead of the game in terms of um, hacking and threats that might be out there. So how do we actually deliver? Um, you know, GitHub Actions is key to that. We've got um, a huge marketplace of actions that you can use and you can write your own actions as well. They run on these things called runners, which can be run on our servers at GitHub or locally. Uh, and then we have GitHub extensions and I'm actually gonna show you one of those today. It's sort of a lesser known cousin of GitHub actions. Those are written by third parties and um, those are used to implement specific features into your software development lifecycle. Uh, you also have integration with Azure and other clouds. We're not just a uh, Azure only uh, setup. Of course, it's GitHub. GitHub was uh, an independent company before it was purchased by Microsoft a few years ago. So of course, you can deliver things to multiple clouds as well. It has integration with popular IDEs. It has free private repos for individuals and teams. If you haven't checked back lately, uh, check that out. Uh, it used to be public only 
uh, repos were free, but we do have uh, free private repos for individuals and teams to a certain level uh, available as well. So check that out. And we have code spaces. I'm going to talk a little bit about what code spaces are later, but basically it's a way for you to do a complete development, uh, to have a complete development environment in your browser, which is pretty cool. We also have Azure boards, which are Kanban, Kanban boards. They're a way of organizing your workflows and uh, delegating responsibilities to specific people. Remember when I said, you know, the, the, one of the questions that comes up is who's doing what? Uh, Azure boards is a great way to keep track of that. Azure pipelines is what we're, we're going to actually focus on today. We have release pipelines and uh, build pipelines. Uh, I'll show you both of those today. You have staged environment releases. I'm going to create something all the way from scratch in my demo, which starts with a GitHub repo. We're going to make a change on our local machine. We're going to push it to GitHub, and then we're going to de deploy out to staging and production. Uh, and we'll show you how to do some A-B testing and some blue green deployments as well. All in 45 minutes. Not bad, huh? OK, so uh, Azure Artifacts as well. So this is a way of storing your software artifacts that you have from Maven, Node, and other package managers that you might have to keep backups for for compliance or just for safety or security uh, in, in the future. We also have Azure Test Plans, which help with websites. Uh, you can actually test websites. You can test loads. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do to automate your testing uh, when you're working inside of Azure uh, DevOps and Azure Pipelines, as well as GitHub Actions. All right, so that brings us to the demo. I mentioned that would be quick, and it was. I just want to get everyone up to speed uh, before we get into the demo. So let's get right into that. So the first thing I want to show you is my Azure portal. And the reason why I want to show you that is what you can do with the portal. Um, so basically, this is my Azure portal. The way I organize my portal is portal.azure.com. If you have a subscription, you might be familiar with this. If you don't, you can sign up for a free subscription as well. Um, but basically, uh, I organize because of my the way I work as a cloud advocate, uh, I organize my dashboard into different pages for different presentations I'm doing. And this happens to be my DevOps for Java Shops presentation. Uh, it, everything that you have on Azure goes into a resource group. And here's mine. It's called DevOps for Java Shops. Uh, and here's some app services. These are the target environments that we're going to run our applications on today. There's one for staging and there's one for production. And if we go down here, we also have this thing called uh, Feature Manager. It's, it's called App Configurator, or App Configuration, but um, it's also called Feature Manager inside of uh, Microsoft as well. We like to keep you on your toes with the terminology. So anyway, uh, that's basically uh, my portal. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out to this project, which is uh, public. You can go out and grab it yourself. DevOps for Java Shops dash test AB Azure DevOps. Uh, and this is going, I'm going to make a change to this on my local machine. And that change is going to be pushed out to this repo. And that is actually going to trigger a deployment, a build and a deployment on uh, DevOps, Azure DevOps. And this is uh, what I've got here. Uh, this is my project for Azure DevOps called DevOps for Java Shops. It's also known as Azure Pipelines. Uh, and this is what I was showing you before, boards, uh, pipelines, test plans, artifacts, and a few other things. But what we're going to focus on today is pipelines. Uh, and inside the pipelines, we're actually going to focus on uh, build pipelines and release pipelines. So let's get started with that. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into my too many tabs open. There we go. Uh, this is the uh, local copy of the repo that I just showed you a minute ago. And I'm just going to make a change to this repo. Uh, and I'm going to call this uh, stage of, of Java test feature flags. There we go. And it's just going to basically um, save this at the top as a title. It's just a little change. Now, when I do this in Visual Studio Code, which is, this is Visual Studio Code, it's a free open source text editor if you haven't seen it before. Uh, check it out. Just search Visual Studio Code. Um, what it does, it tells me that there's been a change made between my repo that's on GitHub and my local repo. And uh, basically, I can, I can update this. Update title 
for stage of Java. All right, I click uh, here and it's gonna tell me I haven't staged this because I didn't and uh, do I wanna stage it and commit it? Yes. And it's gonna use that message. And then right here I can do a pull and a push by just saying uh, sync, sync changes. There we go. So now if I go back up to my repo, Here it is. Let's refresh that. Aha. Update title for stage of Java. So we know it went out there. So now what do we do? We want to connect this to our Azure pipelines so that when I make a change here, it automatically builds that change and releases it out to staging and production. So to do that, we're going to go into Marketplace. Remember I mentioned GitHub extensions. Uh, the Marketplace, I'm just going to search for Azure pipelines spell that right there we go azure pipelines is one of the extensions we have and um, basically what you can do with this is you can link your github repo to your azure pipelines project so let's go ahead and do that i've already downloaded this um, so let me get my password so you're asking GitHub to do something that authenticates with an outside uh, source. So if you have to provide your passwords, you can do that. Uh, and then what happens is you get some uh, permissions down here. It's going to uh, read my GitHub repo and it's going to read and write to uh, Azure Pipelines and to GitHub. Uh, you can do this with all repositories uh, or in this case, we want select repositories and it's going to be on the main um, branch for this. So any changes to the main branch will trigger this connection. And uh, let's just go in. So we're in GitHub still. When I hit save here, it says you're re being redirected to Azure Pipelines. And then it asked me to authenticate with Azure Pipelines. Once again, we're keeping things secure here. And uh, it's asking me the organization that you want to use for your Azure uh, project here in Azure Pipelines. And then once you pick the organization, you pick the actual um, DevOps or Java Shops project. You hit continue. And now you're into Azure Pipelines, but you're also into that organization. So you authenticate with GitHub, then you authenticate with Azure Pipelines, then you authenticate with the Azure Pipelines project because you can set up some pretty granular security with the project as well. So there we go. So we want to select a, a repository. Now, remember, we're now in Azure Pipelines, not in GitHub anymore. So it's asking us, OK, what repository do you want to be talking to uh, in this particular project? And that for that, we want to do the test AB Azure DevOps. It automatically chooses some configuration for us. Uh, and it gives us what it thinks is a pretty good basic uh, Maven project it analyzes the code in that repo and gives us what they think is a pretty good basic uh, Maven project for building this. But here's something cool. What we've done over here is we already have a pipeline. If we go into the GitHub repo, let me flip around to there. If we go to the GitHub repo, there's this uh, file down here called provided Azure pipeline. Uh, and the provided Azure pipeline is, you know, theoretically what someone in your organization would use to uh, you know, say, hey, here's a pipeline that you can use for builds. Um, and it meets our minimum requirements in terms of security and uh, other things. So I can copy this from my local repo, my local copy in uh, Visual Studio Code, and I can paste this into the pipeline here. And now I've got some YAML that's been blessed by our sysadmins. This is a great uh, example of people, process, and products working together. So the people have built, uh, have, have focused on what they know well. In the case of the uh, IT pros or the administrators, they've built this YAML so the dev developers don't have to worry about it. And the developers just take this YAML and build their, their code with it. All right, so let's do save and run. Fingers crossed this works. Uh, so um, set up CI with Azure Pipelines, just leave the default message it's going to have. We're going to commit directly to the main branch. What this is going to do is it's going to take this pipeline and it's going to write it back to the GitHub repo. Because from then on, it's going to use this YAML file as instructions 
to connect the two, the repo and the Azure Pipelines project together. And then it's going to build. It's going to take a couple of seconds to build. And it's actually going to fail. Uh, and that is because um, I need to add one thing to this repo. And I'll show you what that is in a second here. In the meantime, let's just go in and I'll show you what this actually does. So right now it's initializing the job. It's checking out the application. Uh, it's doing some security checks. And as you can see, the Maven package uh, failed. Uh, and I'll show you why the Maven package failed in a second here. Okay, so uh, the reason why it failed is we're using this thing. I, I think I mentioned to you, I'm using this thing called a feature manager. And this particular application requires a feature manager to be referenced inside of the build. It's not necessarily the best way to do your applications, but in this case, uh, it's a demo, so that's okay. So let me just go back and edit this pipeline. So to do that, I'm just gonna go straight back into pipelines and I'm going to edit this one. This is the one that failed, edit. Over here, you see it says variables. Um, yeah, we have to add a variable here, otherwise uh, it won't succeed. So the variable is called app configuration connection string. This is the value, don't look. Uh, you can keep a secret, you can let it override when you're doing specific runs, but in this case, I'm just gonna create a general one uh, and um, you, you can't see the whole thing, so it's pretty secure there. Uh, <laughs> All right, so once we've got that done, uh, the change is applied for the pipeline for all runs. But actually, in this case, what happens is um, I'm going to just to be safe, I'm going to create a new run of this pipeline. Run. So that gives you an example of the kinds of things that you might need to do. Uh, there's a way to set up variables in uh, Azure Pipelines, there's also a library. So inside the library, you can set up a variable group, which allows you to have uh, stored variables. And this way, your developers might not need to have access to a certain resource, but the administrators have access to this. So you can do things like put a secure file in here. Uh, if you're using Maven, for example, and you have a settings.xml file with some sensitive information in it, you can add that file here and it will be used at the time of build, but you don't have to put it in your repo. Um, same with the uh, variable groups. So the variable groups themselves, you can create a whole bunch of variables related to a particular application or just specific to name and they'll be referenced automatically when the pipeline runs. So you can give the developers access to the pipeline but not access to the variables which might connect to a database with sensitive information that might have more uh, security control. So that's kind of cool. All right, so let's go back to pipelines. It's still running, still running. There we go. I know it's gonna work this time, but uh, uh, it usually takes about a minute. So let's go back in and I'll show you what this does. Actually, I want to show you one more thing too while that's running. Um, MS hosted agents. So you might be wondering what's actually running right now. Uh, it's a thing called Microsoft hosted agents. They're similar to GitHub runners. Uh, they run on, in this case, Microsoft hardware on Azure. Uh, and you have different images that you can choose from. You can create your own images as well, but these are the pre-built images and you can add things to these images if you don't have what you need in here as well. But for example, let's look at uh, Windows Server. This one we're using Ubuntu 20, I believe. Uh, so let's go in and look at what's inside Ubuntu 20. Look at that. So we have a ton of software here that's already built into this image which basically allows you to do most things. The only thing it didn't do is have an automatic connection to my feature manager, and that's what was missing from the actual running. So you can see here, I'm just going through it real quick. I'm just giving you an idea of the volume that you have of software that you can use. But if you're using you know, uh, Erlang, uh, Python, Node, uh, all of it's in there. All right, so let's go back to the actual pipeline. Okay, so look, it finished and it's successful this time. Yay. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to build a release. So that's the build. If we look in the build, oh, components governance detected. I have an old version of Node I'm using here, which I need to update. But for now, that's a great example. I'm going to decide that's a great example of the way that our security works internally for uh, component detection. 
as someone who writes demos all the time and somebody and somebody who sometimes shows people how to do things wrong, I get in all kinds of trouble with our component management people and our security people. Uh, I've got a lot of notices, uh, but they understand. They understand we're trying to do things. We're showing people how to do things. And uh, sometimes those things are wrong and sometimes they're simple. And sometimes you want to show people how to do things wrong so you can explain how to do it right. I'm sticking to that story. Anyway. All right. So uh, Maven package, uh, everything this time succeeded with a Maven package and it's very long. So I won't show you that. And then what it does when it's finished with a build, a successful build, it actually builds a jar file in this case. And it puts it into a spot that I can use and retrieve from my release pipelines. So let's go over to release pipelines. You just go to releases over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a totally new release pipeline. And for this pipeline, we are going to use Azure uh, Deploy Java app to an Azure app service. Okay, and the first stage is gonna be called staging. And there it is. Uh, there's nothing in there right now. And what we wanna do is we wanna actually deploy a, deploy, deploy a jar. We don't wanna deploy a joy. Um, to our Azure app service. So we want to select this and then we want to deselect this. Um, I always forget what this is, but uh, basically you have to enable tasks and then disable tasks. Uh, I always thought it would be over here, but it's not. It's a right click to do that. So we're going to deploy a jar to an Azure app service uh, and um, we're going to use the Azure Resource Manager connection type. So the next thing we want to do is uh, we've got web app on Windows, which is what we want. There's several things we can choose, but that's the one we want. Uh, and we're going to load the apps that we have. Actually, maybe it's web app on Linux. Uh, it is. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, so uh, it's web app on Linux because we're running Linux as the app service. Uh, there's a startup command that's already built into the app, and I'll show you that after. I've already pre-created the app. so. Uh, I'll show you that after. Uh, so what we want to do now is hit save, which I always forget to do. Uh, and then from there, um, we can go back to the pipeline itself. So now beautiful, we've got this staging task. We want to create uh, another task that goes to production. So if we do that right here, copy of staging goes to production. In this case, we want to call it production. Okay, I want to save that one as well. But there's one other thing we need to change in here. If you remember, this one's called staging. We need to change this to production. Save it again. Okay, and just for fun, we could do something else, which is um, deploying to a, um, a deployment slot. And I'll explain what those are after, uh, but let's go ahead and do that as well. So we take this, we clone it. Uh, and then we change this task to go to Java shop production. Deploy to a slot or web app service. Resource group is DevOps for Java shop slot production. No, we want to go to Canary. Uh, I mentioned before, I'm going to show you how to do AB testing. Uh, and this is what we're doing here. So we're actually going to have this AB testing set up. Save that, okay, pipeline. So now we've got staging, production, except this one is not production, it's called Canary now. And this one is now production. All right, so there we go. All right, so we've got our staging server. It's going to our uh, staging application. Uh, we've got a canary. The canary is going to this thing called, whoops, didn't want to do that. Let's delete that. It does give you a good example of what you can do to do branching, though. So uh, I didn't actually want to do that, though. So let's go ahead and delete this one. Confirm. All right. So what I want to do is just show you the tasks. And I hit the clone button instead. So uh, deploy jar to Azure App Service. This one's going to go to Web App Linux. Java Shop Production is going to do, go to deployment slot called Canary. Let's go ahead and save that again. Just because it's good to save it. I never know if 
I forgot to save it before. Production, once again, it's going to web out on Linux, Java Shop Production. Uh, and we're not deploying to a slot this time. We're going to go to production directly uh, in this particular uh, uh, stage of the Azure DevOps project. Next thing we want to do, what's going to happen is this is going to be triggered automatically by an artifact. So let's grab the artifact. You can use uh, the build, which is what we're going to use. You can grab it from GitHub, TFVC, if you're using TFS, uh, Team Foundation version control. There's actually Azure Artifacts as well, a GitHub release, containers, Docker Hub, or Jenkins. So that's kind of cool, but we're just going to do builds for now. Let's choose build, close that. Choose build. And we got to do the source build pipeline. So in this case, we're going to do a test AB Azure DevOps 1, which corresponds to the build we just did. And we're just going to grab the latest version of this. So let's add that. The next thing we want to do is we want to make this automatic. So you click the little button here, continuous deployment trigger. Uh, you enable it. Uh, you can add branches if you want, uh, specific settings. Uh, for now, we just want the default, so that's there. It's in blue circle now. That means every time there's a successful build in the pipeline we created through the connection through GitHub, it's going to connect here, and it's going to trigger this particular release pipeline, which is going to go through staging, canary, and production. So uh, last but not least, let's set up a little security. You don't want every time somebody pushes to the repo to be showing up in production. Uh, you want to have some controls in there. So in this case, uh, we want to have a post-deployment condition here that says, uh, let's do an approval for me. And this is one of the nice things about having an integrated identity system built into the uh, deployment is uh, I can set up a group or I can set up myself. Uh, and um, there's different settings here. I'm going to get into those in a bit. But for now, let's do that. So let's make sure that uh, before this actually goes to Canary, it goes through staging. The idea here would be you do some test in staging, and then once it passes there, you get a manual approval to move it to Canary. And Canary is on our production server, but it's a deployment slot. Uh, I'm going to explain, while this is running, I'm going to explain what uh, the deployment slots are. So it'll be clear in a minute. The next thing we want to do is once it passes through Canary and it's okay, let's set up another post deployment approval. And then before it goes into production, uh, let's set up another approval. So pre-deployment approval in this case is going to go to me as well. And um, anybody who's worked in production environments, uh, it's probably pretty obvious why you want to do that. So you want to have control. Once it's done in Canary and the developers say, hey, yeah, we've done all our tests. Uh, you might want to deploy this uh, in a scheduled way or uh, meeting some other criteria, maybe uh, late at night or off peak hours for your application. Uh, so you would set that up to be manually approved. Uh, you can also set this up to do things called triggers, which is um, you've got uh, gates in here. And if you uh, enable the gates, there's automated ways to do things, including uh, checking Azure policy compliance to making sure that uh, there's compliance, uh, predefined compliance requirements that might be built into this project. You can invoke an Azure function to do some checks and go yay or nay on the particular application. Or maybe you have to update a database table in between as well. You can use a function to do that um, as part of the release. Invoke a REST API. So you might have a third-party tool that checks for compliance in your dependencies, uh, security issues, things like that. You can use, uh, if it has a REST API, you can use this to do a yay or nay. Uh, as well, some automated stuff. Uh, Azure Monitor to check and see if performance is going to be adequate. Uh, and then you could query some work items to see in your Azure boards if this particular task is ready to go into production. But those are the kinds of things you can do uh, when you're actually doing that stuff. All right, so let's save this. Once again, there's a couple places you have to save it. And I, uh, it's not as... Uh, Easy as it sounds, especially when you're doing a presentation and trying to remember everything. Okay, anyway, uh, let's kick off a release. 
So this is basically going to create a release from staging to canary and production, and it's going to stop at each step along the way that I've defined and ask for my approval. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll see here as the job release gets created, bum, bum, bum. it's queued. By the way, this is uh, free uh, to a certain level. Uh, I believe up to 10 parallel projects running at once with builds and releases. Uh, and you can deploy things out to other cloud platforms. It's not exclusive to Azure as well. So the uh, um, uh, our, our competitors, AWS, Google, and others have built their own deployment uh, tools that are plugged into our system that you can use to deploy out to their clouds as well. So you can have a multi-cloud deployment from Azure DevOps. All right, so this is taking a couple of seconds here. And there you go. So uh, staging, it's in staging now. Uh, and it's pet need approval before we move it to Canary. So let's go ahead and do that approval. Just approve it. I can make a comment if I want, but uh, I don't necessarily want to. Let's go back to the pipeline. Over here. Also, if I look in the logs here, I can see that the job has completed and it's deployed to my Azure app service. So if I look in this log, I can see it went to javashopstaging.azurewebsites.net. And all I have to do here is just uh, control and click, as it says. And uh, that's actually going to open the browser. Uh, you get a little white little error message here. And you just say, welcome the actual application is there. Okay, so it's running, it's in staging, and you can see here it says stage of Java test feature flags now. So we got our update in, uh, great. Everything's going good. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go back to the uh, pipeline and check in on the, okay, so Canary is pending approval now. So that means it's ready to go to production. I can approve this to go to production. Now that's from the dev side. So it's approved to go to production, but as you can see here, it's pending approval before we actually put it into production. So what I can do here is I can click on approve, and that's actually gonna put it in to our production environment. Uh, I can also deploy this for later, and uh, you can tell the developer did not build this because um, who, who in their right mind would set up a default deployment for Friday? Uh, but anyway, uh, that's definitely something that's an option. You don't have to use that date. You can use any date you like. Uh, and uh, that will defer the deployment until the time that you decide. So even though I've approved it, it won't happen until, until that is actually enabled. But for this case, I'm just going to approve it and let it move into production. Now, there's a couple of things I wanted to show you. I mentioned A-B testing, uh, and the reason why I wanted to show you that, let's go into the actual production website. Let's go here. Uh, the production website has um, a couple of different options here. I mentioned deployment slots. Remember when we're deploying to Canary, we're deploying this thing called a deployment slot. What's cool here is I can set up the production canary and production to be 50% of the traffic, meaning that somebody's gonna see the new feature that I've just deployed uh, only half the time. Half the visitors to this website will see the new version of this. I can set up to four deployment slots for this, but in the purpose for the purposes of A-B testing, generally do A and B, so you do 50%. And if I wanted to, I could ramp this to 25 or 75 and then uh, you know, have the automatic traffic going the other way as well. And once I'm ready, I can do a couple things. I can deploy this the way I just did in Azure DevOps, or I can do a slot swap here. The, slot will, the swap will actually take the Canary version, put it in production, and that way, if there's any problems after production, just to be triple safe, you could reverse that as well. Now, there's another cool thing here. Whoops, I hit the plus sign there. Okay. Uh, anyway, discard. Um, so the next thing I wanted to show you was in the app itself, 
uh, if I go in here, you'll notice this little uh, bit guy here. Now I mentioned we can also use feature flags. So we've got that app configuration set up. And what feature flags are is a way to actually turn on and off features. Um, and you can set these to be 50-50 as well for A-B testing. Um, so I'm giving you a couple of different options here to do the same thing. But this is also something else that's cool. So let me go down to the feature manager. And there's a thing called beta. So if I turn this off and I go back to the website, and you can see the little bit guy uh, disappeared and uh, a couple other things disappeared as well. Uh, if I turn it back on, they come back on. The idea here is you can control one or more websites through your configuration manager. You put it in your code. Uh, it works with Java and a few other platforms, including not surprisingly .NET. Uh, and um, you can control different aspects of uh, your applications just by turning things on and off totally externally to the application itself once you've set up the code. Uh, and there are different ways. Let me just add a feature flag here. So demo, and um, you can create different feature flags. You can create something that targets a certain region, for example. Uh, you can do a time window. So if you have something that you want to display on your website for only a specific period of time, you can turn this on and off here. Or you can do custom, and in custom, you can do a percentage. Uh, percentage or time gradient time window. In this case, percentage, so I could say uh, equals 50. And that's going to set up the uh, percentage for this uh, for only half the visitors to see one version and half the visitors to see the previous version. So um, that's the feature flags in a nutshell. So there's two different ways you can do that. All right, so that's the demo. Uh, let me just wrap up with a little bit of a discussion about how you can keep your investments. So here's that software development life cycle I showed you before, planning, developing, releasing, and monitoring and learning. Uh, there's a lot of different tools that already do some of the things I showed you here today. And if you're using these tools, don't worry. Uh, we've worked a lot with all of the vendors you see on these pages to integrate them into Azure DevOps. Uh, if you have something you're using like Jenkins or uh, GitLab or um, a Puppet or Chef, uh, chances are we've worked with them directly as a partner to make sure that their applications integrate with our platform. Uh, the great thing about that is you can do your builds and your tests, which are generally what you do with uh, these other tools. And then your deployment could be handled through Azure Pipelines. Uh, and the advantage there is once you get into Azure Pipelines, everything's integrated and everything's deployable through Azure Pipelines. Um, which makes it just really, really easy for things like the uh, automatic approvals that I showed you, because everything's integrated with your identity management system and you can control who has access to releasing things to production, kind of an important security feature uh, and things like that. So uh, it's really good to have that integrated deployment feature through our pipelines uh, and also builds. Uh, but if you're doing build and test for Jenkins, for example, which is, you know, a lot of Java shops are, you can just use that for your uh, builds and tests and then pass the application once it's compiled in a successful build to your application, uh, sorry, to Azure DevOps, uh, and a pipeline can pick that up and then deploy it out to Azure. So we talked about what is DevOps. We talked about people, process, and products. We did a demo of DevOps in actions, and I showed you how you can keep your investments. Uh, there are some docs you can look at. Uh, docs.com, uh, ACA MS DevOps Resource Center has great resources on DevOps in general, not just specific to Microsoft. And then our Microsoft specific stuff is at Azure DevOps Docs. So, Thanks very much for joining. Um, I hope that was enjoyable and um, thank you very much.